Arcaders, it's UberNerd527 here, and welcome once again to the Cartoon Connoisseur Theater Podcast and our minicast, Pokemon Rewind. And I'm so glad you guys are here today. Now, for those of you who have never listened to the podcast before, we are going through the Pokemon anime episode by episode, but we're going through them in the random story arc. So we choose a story arc, and we're going through the those episodes of that story arc. And we are currently in the story arc called Adventures in the Orange Islands. Before we get really into this episode, I first want to go ahead and make a really great announcement. Now, you've been uh, hearing the last couple episodes me teasing a very special announcement, so I want to go ahead and announce that to you. Now, some of you, if you follow the website, thearcadearchives.com, you've probably already seen this. But if you haven't, let me go ahead and announce it now. As most of you Pokemon fans out there know next month is a very special month for Pokemon. Now, for those of you who may be just listening to this podcast and don't know too much about Pokemon, next month is Pokemon's 20th anniversary. There's a lot of really great stuff coming out of Nintendo and out of the Pokemon Company. And we're very, very excited here at the Cartoon Connoisseur Theater Podcast. So we want to celebrate the 20th anniversary as well as Nintendo and everyone else who is celebrating it this uh, next month. So we have a very special podcast that we're going to do and this is going to be on February 27th which is the official Pokemon Day and it is the official 20th anniversary of Pokemon. So on that day we will be having a very special podcast. Now not only are we going to have one podcast we are going to have two. And we're gonna. Our podcast is actually going to be about the first Pokemon movie, Pokemon the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. We're very excited because I have some special guests who will be joining me to go over the episode, the, the movie. Not only that, but I will ha be having a couple of my friends who are huge Pokemon fans talk about their kind of experience with Pokemon and how it influenced their lives and just some fun memories that they have. That comes to you. The listener. If you're listening to this podcast right now and you want to kind of be a part of this, then I want you to. So here's what we're going to do. If you could, if you have some recording equipment at home, it could be your iPod or iPhone or Galaxy tablet or whatever you've got at home. If you have one of these things at home, it should have a voice recorder on it. If you have some really good voice recording equipment, that's fine too. Now what I want you to do is I want you to record yourself in about, maybe about, at the very most, about six or seven minutes. That way uh, I can get everybody in the podcast here. And I want you to answer these few questions. And the questions are, where did you first hear about Pokemon? What was your first, what was the first Pokemon game you played? Which of the starter Pokemon did you first choose? Who is your favorite Pokemon? What's your favorite Pokemon type? What's your favorite Pokemon generation? What region would you consider your hometown? Have you ever watched the anime? And if so, who's your favorite character? How has Pokemon influenced your life in the last 20 years? And what do you want to see Pokemon do in the next 20 years? I'll go ahead and put that also in the, uh, if you can't remember it, I'll put that in the description below as well. So that way you can also read it. So answer those questions, record yourself answering those questions, and then send that to me. You can send it to our email, which is talesfromthegamegrid at gmail.com. T-A-L-E-S-F-R-O-M. T-H-E-G-A-M-E-G-R-I-D at gmail.com. If you send that to us before February 15th, I will put your recording in the podcast. So you'll be able to, your friends and family members will be able to hear you on the podcast as well. So please send us your thoughts, your, your memories. And if you have a few extra things you want to throw in there, I am more than happy to let you do that as well. Just remember, folks, that we try to keep this PG rated. So try to keep the, the language down a little bit so that way everyone can hear this and have a great time with this, okay? All right, now it's time to get into our episode. Now, this is the ninth episode of the Orange Island story arc and the 89th episode of the Pokemon anime. 
It premiered in America on March 4th, 2000. Now, I didn't really have too many fun facts about that, but I did find out about March 4th, 2000. March 4th, 2000 was the same day that the PlayStation 2 was released in Japan. It hadn't come to America just yet, but it went to Japan, and this was uh, the release day for the PlayStation 2 in Japan. So I didn't really have any fun facts about this episode, so I want to go over the spotlighted Pokemon for this episode. And the spotlighted Pokemon is Kabuto. Kabuto, the ancient Pokemon. Though this Pokemon is now believed to be extinct, it had a hard shell that protected its body and is believed to have been a powerful swimmer. Now, Kabuto is a rock water type, which evolves into Kabutops at level 40. Now, Kabuto are weak against fighting, ground, grass, and electric. Kabuto was originally known as ATT in the original Pokemon Beta, which is a derivative of the word Atlantis, which kind of fits Kabuto in a little bit. Now, Kabuto's design consists of a mix of a trilobite and a still-living horseshoe crab, a mix between the two. Now, trilobites, I looked up a little bit of what they were. They are extinct marine arthropods that flourished during the Pezozoic era. And again, please forgive me for butchering any of these names i'm not an archaeologist or or any kind of gist so please forgive me for butchering any of these names the horseshoe crab which is also what it's based off of are also arthropods and they live primarily in and around the shallow waters on soft sandy or muddy bottoms in the ocean and they're mainly primarily found in get this japan <laughs> so as you can probably already see this that this Pokemon was very inspired by the horseshoe crab because horseshoe crabs live in and around Japan. So it's no surprise that this animal had some influence on one of the Pokemon in the game. Let's go ahead with all the fun facts out of the way. Now it's time to get into our episode. And today's episode is called... Shell Shock! Now... Back in the last episode, I called it Shell Shocked. I added an ED at the end. Actually, it's just Shell Shocked, so please forgive me for that. All right, let's get into the episode. So, we start off our episode pretty much like every episode of the Orange Islands. Ash and the company are sailing on Lapras to their next destination. However, this time we actually get the announcer who complains about this. <laughs> Well, this is getting to be a familiar scene. Sunny skies, balmy breezes, and our heroes drifting towards some tropical adventure. Announcers never get to have any fun. So after the announcer kind of complains about the whole fact that he's not there with them, Ash and Misty start spouting out how awesome this day is, how wonderful the weather is, how warm everything is, but not too warm. And they're just enjoying the day pretty much. And Tracy kind of chimes in and says that he wasn't, he wouldn't be surprised if he, if you saw some Pokemon kind of swimming around. But then, just as they were saying all this, a boat just comes barreling in at top speed and almost knocks Lapras and all of the occupants off of Lapras. Now Misty gets angry and starts yelling at the boat, and and Ash and Tracy are kind of wondering where they're where they're going. That's when Tracy spots an island straight ahead, so Ash decides we should go get we should go over there. So they land on the island, and of course, Ash lets Lapras rest in his Pokeball. Now they hear a news reporter talking about an exclusive news report. Now they hear a news reporter talk about a special report that she is on the island for. Now she talks about how these scientists are hoping to find uh, to find a big discovery on this island. And it will answer some of the questions about some ancient Pokemon, and specifically Kabuto. Ash and company get excited about this and decide to follow the news crew as they go to the base camp of the dig. Now the news crew then go ahead and start to set up a new interview with the kind of leader of this whole expedition crew, which, surprise, surprise, is Nurse Joy. Nurse Joy is kind of the head of this whole archaeological dig and she talks about how there was a caputo fossil that was found by a fisherman who caught one in his net and because of this they kind of figured out where the caputo fossil came from and it came from this island now they're hoping that this will kind of show them 
what kind of habitat and, and life that Kabuto kind of had because Kabuto is still kind of a mystery to everybody. They are pretty much extinct about now. And they're also trying to figure out if there is some basis to a claim that Kabuto oil will make you live forever. Now, Nurse Joy then says that she doesn't actually believe that this oil will make you live forever, but it may have some medicinal purposes that may help out people greatly, so she wants to kind of figure this all out. This gets both Tracy and Ash excited, and they jump right in front of Nurse Joy, and they ask her if they can join the this historic dig, which kind of cuts the interview. We go ahead, and, and uh, of course, then Ash and Tracy kind of act silly and, and jump right in front of the camera, and Ash tells Professor Oak that he's going to bring him back a Kabuto fossil, and Tracy kind of being the ever-present fanboy kind of just say hey professor oak do you remember me and then of, of course ash has to call out you know make a call out to his mom of course misty's all embarrassed by this and she grabs ash and starts pounding on him because of course uh she's feeling so embarrassed by the fact that ash and tracy did this on live what I don't think it's live TV per se, but kind of a general, you know, on TV that this is going to be seen by her friends and family. So she's kind of angry about this. So then, of course, we're introduced to none other than Team Rocket. Team Rocket shows up in their signature Magikarp sub, and Jesse is looking through the periscope, seeing what the twerps are doing on this island. Then she notices the camera crew and all the people around them, and she wonders what the, all the hubbub is all about. James gets mad at Jesse because she has stopped pedaling, and kind of scolds her for because she has done so. And then Meowth suggests that they should go hurry up and catch Pikachu so that they they could also get some FaceTime on TV with this camera crew around, which gets motivates Jesse to start pedaling even faster. Now we move on to the kind of treacherous trek that they're going to where the dig site is. Now they have to kind of make this trek through the island to get to where they believe the fossil may have floated away from. So the team goes through this whole thing and with the team, besides the human characters, there are also some Pokemon with them. They have two Machoke, two Rhydon, and two Growlithes that are coming along with the archaeologists the camera crew, and of course, Ash and company. Now, they reach a mountain path and are carefully going across kind of a narrow path, which Misty kind of gets scared because she looks down and she kind of freaks out for a second. Now, as they're going across this very narrow path, Jesse, James, and Meowth are kind of following just below them. Now, Jesse and Meowth are walking pretty briskly, while James is kind of lagging behind. Now, he's in a completely different costume. He's in kind of like... Uh, mountain climber gear he has a giant backpack on and he starts moaning and kind of falls to the ground and jesse and meowth turn around and scold him because he's walking so slow and then of course james kind of fires back about the fact that he got the, he brought these supplies that they're probably going to need and of course jesse kind of complains about why'd you bring the backpack anyways we don't need all this junk and of course uh, james fires back and says i didn't want your attitude either but i have to deal with both and then, and then we jump right back to our archaeologist team. Now, as they're walking down this road, this path, the both of the Growlithe kind of smell, or I'm sorry, hear something ahead of them. They notice that there's a big boulder at the top of the hill where they are, and the boulder starts rocking back and forth and then finally rolls down towards the team. Now, as they're running away from the boulder, Misty puts Togepi in her backpack to kind of keep it safe, and... Uh, they try to get away from the boulder as quickly as possible. We also notice that there's a foot that was standing on top of the hill, which is kind of alluding to someone had actually pushed that boulder towards the team. Now, Ash runs up to Nurse Joy and tells her that she should let the mock choke kind of deal with this boulder. Now, both mock choke run right in front of the boulder and grab it and stop it right in its tracks and then throw the boulder off the side of the cliff. Now, all the archaeologists and uh, everyone on the team is all excited and grateful that the mock choke has saved them. But unbeknownst to them, the boulder was actually thrown right at Team Rocket 
but only hits James, who gets knocked off the cliff and falls down. And we think that that's the end of Team Rocket for this episode, but it's not. As they're kind of recovering from all this and continue walking, Pikachu, who's on Ash's shoulder, kind of senses something nearby. He kind of looks around and sees something. Ash kind of asks him what asks what's wrong, but Pikachu can't see or hear anything anymore, so he kind of just brushes it off. Now they get to the digging site, which is this huge hidden bay that's on the other side of the island. They start to dig. Now as they're digging, uh, they, the Rhydon are using their horn drills to kind of get through some of the dirt while the Mach Choke are carrying the heavy boulders and also doing all their heavy lifting because that's what Mach Choke do best. Now Ash and Tracy are still excited that they're, they're here to dig and they might find some fossils and they're really excited. However, Misty is just pooped from all this work. And she's kind of sitting down watching Togepi as as they're kind of doing this. And I think it's kind of cute that Togepi is kind of picking up these little rocks and kind of placing them very similar to how the Mach Choke are doing. As they're all talking, however, there's a boulder at the top of the hill right above them. And this boulder starts again rocking back and forth and then falls down, almost hitting Ash and company. But that's not the only boulder that starts falling. A whole bunch of boulders from the top of the hill where the dig site is, start fall falling on top of all the equipment and almost entering some of the archaeologists. Nurse Joy tells the Rhydon to use their horn drills to attack, to destroy the boulders that are falling down. So they start attacking it, and one boulder almost hits the, almost hits the news crew, and the Rhydon then saves the news crew from the boulder. As they're kind of recovering from all this, they're kind of talking about what's going on, what's happening, what are all these accidents all about. Misty suggests that these accidents aren't really accidents. And it's at that time that Pikachu sees a little shadow go into the forest. And Pikachu then chases after it. Now, of course, because Pikachu starts chasing after it, Ash chases after Pikachu. And Ash kind of calls out to Pikachu and, and asks, Hey, what's going on, Pikachu? What's wrong? And then he sees the shadow figure that Pikachu is chasing. And so he starts chasing after it as well. At Pikachu is chasing the, the figure. Ash goes a different route to kind of cut him off and ends up tackling the, the person and falling to the ground. The person then gets up and kind of brushes Ash off of him. Ash finds out that this is some old man. Now, the old man then warns Ash to get off the island or something horrible is going to happen. As this is all happening, the rest of the group comes up and sees the old man, and the old man, again, then tells them to get off the island as well because there, some calamity is going to happen. And Nurse Joy tells this old man, whoever he is, that they're not here to hurt anybody. They're just here to study these fossils. And of course, the old man then talks about an ancient prophecy. The scavengers arrive. The moon will glow an angry red. The land itself will vanish and be swallowed by the sea. Now, the old man trying to just continues with all this and tells them that if they continue to be on this island... They're going to wreak havoc, and this is going to destroy everything. Misty kind of is just had it with all this, and she just lays it into this old man and say, Hey, listen, you. We haven't done anything yet. You're the one disturbing this island by throwing boulders on him, which actually kind of shuts the old man up for a second. And then he starts yelling at them again. But just as he's about to start yelling about doom and gloom again, another scientist comes running out from the site, and starts yelling they had found a Caputo fossil. So the re the gang kind of leaves the old man alone and, and goes to see what this discovery is. Now, as they do, they go inside a cave. Nurse Joy and the rest of the group kind of just make sure that this is an actual Caputo fossil, and they actually find out that it is. But then Tracy kind of notices something. He finds another Caputo fossil that looks very similar to the one they just found. And then they find another, and then another, and then another, and then... They all notice that this whole cave is made of nothing but Kabuto fossils. And this kind of gets everyone start to worry. But then the cave starts collapsing on itself. Of course, who shows up to make more calamity? Team Rocket. And of course, we get Team Rocket's signature motto. Now, Team Rocket grabs a whole bunch of Kabuto fossils. The old man kind of just scolds them and tells them that that you know what he's what they're doing is wrong which team rocket kind of just brushes him off and then james throws a bomb at the old man 
and the old man tosses it to one character and the other character tosses it there. Just basically they're playing hot potato with this until finally it lands in Ash's hands and Ash kind of just looks at it and goes, well, what is this thing? And Misty kind of yells at him to throw it and so he, he does and when he does, it lands on the ground and blows up, making a hole for Team Rocket to escape in their balloon with all the Kabuto fossils that they had stolen. Now, as they're coming off, up out of the horizon, you see that the moon is a red color. And somehow, now, this episode does not explain how this actually works, but somehow the light from that red moon reanimates all the Kabuto. And not just in Team Rocket's balloon, but also all over the cave. They start coming back to life. As they're doing this, the cave starts shaking again. And they notice that since these Kabutos are coming back to life, this cave is about to collapse. So they all start running out of the, of the cave, kind of leaving Team Rocket to themselves. But then Team Rocket is having trouble because the Kabuto have now been coming to sleep and kind of attacking all of them. And one of the Kabuto actually pops a hole in the balloon, blasting Team Rocket off. And again, we don't see them for the rest of the episode. Again, hooray. So Nurse Joy is now like, oh crap, what have we done? We gotta leave this island. So she gets everyone together and they've gotta leave the island. Well, the island has started to sink because the foundation of the island is now alive. The old man then suggests that they run to the forest and start making a raft. So that way they can survive the island sinking. The reason why they don't go to the boats is because the boats are way too far away. So they need a, a solution that's a lot quicker. So that's why they decide to create the rafts. So they go to the, the forest. They start building the rafts thanks to the Rhydon, the Mock Choke, the Growlithe, and of course Ash and Company. Just as they had finished the raft, the island starts sinking more, which means that the water is now flooding the forest. So they all jump onto the raft and Ash and Misty call on their water Pokemon to pull the raft out to sea. Now they watch as the island kind of just sinks uh, into the water. And Nurse Joy kind of, uh, now that the, everything's kind of quiet and calmed down, Nurse Joy kind of apologizes to the old man for kind of not listening to his warnings about this whole thing. And... The camera crew tells the old man that that they're not gonna not they're not going to put this news story on TV. That they're gonna just kind of leave this quiet between all of them, and they feel that it's 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 kind of a right thing because people will probably try to come back to this area and try to get the Kabuto, and these Kabuto are extinct, and they don't want people to make the Kabuto extinct again. So then we get a, then we also go ahead and the, see the Kabuto swimming out towards the light of the moon and we all kind of assume that they're going towards a new home where they'll never ever be bothered by anyone ever again up until somebody else finds a fossil in their fishing net. <laughs> and that's pretty much the episode. Now, let's go into my pros and cons for this episode. So first and foremost, the pr I I really don't have, I really don't have a lot of pros for this episode. I really only have two. First, for a throwaway episode, and again, for those of you who haven't been listening to the podcast, I call a throwaway episode an episode that doesn't really connect to the storyline we are currently in. Now, a lot of the older episodes had a lot of these throwaway episodes that had no connection to the storyline they were just in the area that we were in this is one of those examples of a throwaway episode because you really don't need to watch this episode however even that even though that this was a throwaway episode i kind of liked the story i kind of liked the adventure i kind of liked it was almost very reminiscent of movies like indiana jones where they kind of find something and then they kind of disturb it and then it, they realize that whatever they they've, they've disturbed some something's someone's peace as just with Pokemon. So I, I did enjoy the episode. However, let's get into my cons now. This is a throwaway episode and even though the story is pretty good for a throwaway episode, I really dislike throwaway episodes because especially if you're binge watching this show, these kind of episodes bore you a lot. You kind of want to get away from these episodes because they 
they don't have anything to do with the 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 plot that you're currently trying to invest yourself in. Now, the storyline that this is pretty much for this episode is that Ash is trying to go to all these gyms and get badges so that he can then fight the champion at the end. Now, we have not se- we have not seen a gym battle since Sissy in a very very a uh, 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 long long time ago. So, it's it, it kind of bores you a little bit because you don't really want to see it. Now, I've seen a lot of TV shows and cartoons where I think they really did it right. Now, I don't say that throwaway episodes, and again, I'm repeating myself from last week, I don't inherently hate throwaway episodes. I feel it's perfectly okay to have a random story arc, but you still have to hook your audience somehow with something. Like I said in the previous podcast, Black and White did this very well by adding little secret endings at the end of each episode to kind of entice you to continue to watch. And I kind of think that that this is a good idea for Pokemon, that they need a kind of a little hook that you want to continue to watch. Now again, I understand that this is a children's show, and especially back then, it was very difficult to have a story arc to watch because a lot of times, some of these episodes didn't even play in order. That I, for some strange reason, a lot of the broadcasting companies back then would just broadcast episodes all willy-nilly, and a lot of times they didn't even broadcast them in order. In fact, that makes me. That's why some of the DVDs kind of make me angry because they don't put them in episode order; they put them in broadcast order, which sometimes makes no sense, especially for older shows like Pokemon. Now. The other thing that I don't like about this episode is that it's a formulaic episode. Ash and company find a new area. They find a, they highlight a specific Pokemon. Team Rocket tries to steal said Pokemon. Team Rocket's defeated. They blast off. And Ash and company learn a lesson that they forget a few episodes later. I, I don't necessarily hate this formula, but when it gets to just continuously doing it over and over, especially over episode after episode after episode, it just gets so repetitive that you just want something new. And you really kind of want episodes like Pikachu Revolts where it kind of just gives you a new, a, a, a new spin on different formulas. So I, I really – that's what, another thing that I didn't like in this episode. Another thing I kind of questioned in my head was the fact that this episode really focused around Kabuto specifically. However, earlier in the first season, in, during the Indigo League, they had a whole episode dedicated to extinct Pokemon. And at this time, that would be Omanite, Omastar, Kabuto, Kabutox, and Aerodactyl. They had an episode with all of those Pokemon in it, and you saw that they were alive and well. They were just sleeping at the bottom of a mountain somewhere. And in this episode, Ash and Misty, who were both there for that episode, acted as if they had never seen a Kabuto ever in their life, which is totally wrong because they have seen Kabuto. In fact, they've seen Kabuto several times, not only just a real Kabuto, but when they met Bill, Bill was dressed up like a Kabuto, so it's not a shock that Kabuto, uh, that I, I don't understand the shock that Ash had when he heard that they were digging up these Kabuto fossils. Maybe it was just the fact that they were fossils themselves that he just thought it was interesting. I don't know, but it, it kind of just seemed like Ash had never seen a Kabuto before, which is, if you've watched the show, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, again, that's just another thing that I dislike about this episode. But please don't get me wrong. I did like it. It was kind of fun. I did remember this uh, when I was a kid. I, I saw this episode back in the day. I do remember uh, most of it. So, it was for a throwaway episode. It wasn't bad. Now, I want to hear what you think about this episode. So, if you want to leave your comments, if you're listening to this on YouTube... 
on thearcadearchives.com. I want you to let me know what you think about this episode. Did you think it was a good episode? Did you think it was a bad episode? What do you think this episode, uh, how they could improve this episode? So what I want you to do is I want you to leave a comment either uh, down here on the comment section on thearcadearchives.com or on YouTube. Now, if you're listening to us on iTunes or if you just want to follow us on Twitter, my personal Twitter is at TalesFTGameGrid. Again, at TalesFTGameGrid. And you can actually reply on there and uh, reply to me. Make sure you put my uh, username in there and let me know what you thought about this episode. And I will read these replies on the next podcast. So please make sure that you, you do that and uh, I will read them when I get them. Whenever I get them, I'll read them on that podcast when I'm, when I'm recording them, okay? So thank you very much for, for any replies that I get in the future. Don't feel, for, don't feel shy, folks. Make sure you put those comments in, and I will definitely read them on the podcast, okay? All right, now it's time for some housekeeping, our usual uh, end housekeeping here. So... We are part of the Arcade Archives Network, and we're on a website called the, uh, and the website's address is thearcadearchives.com. Again, it's thearcadearchives.com. If you're listening to this on thearcadearchives.com, again, please make sure you list, uh, put a reply. Let us know what you think about this. Did you like this episode? Do you like this podcast? Would you like to, uh, if there's anything that we could improve with this podcast, please let us know and write in the comments below. Also, on thearcadearchives.com, I have a monthly web comic called Tales from the Game Grid, which is also my Twitter handle and, of course, the email address. Tales from the Game Grid is my monthly comic. comes out every month. Please make sure you're reading that. We are on the 25th issue. We're about to go on our 26th one. We have been on the, on the website now for two years, and we're very excited to see what this year has in store for us. We have a lot of plans for the comic, and I'm, I'm really hoping people out there who are fans of the comic are excited because this is, this is going to be an exciting year for our comic. Also, if you're a fan of anime, you'll also enjoy our other podcast, Ruby Roundup. If you've never heard of it, this is a show on roosterteeth.com. It's very, very good. We're doing going through volume three of Ruby right now as the episodes come out. And we're almost, I, th I feel that we're almost through with volume three. I think we're getting close to that ending. So stay tuned for that. It's getting really good. So please check that out. Now, if you're listening to this on iTunes, please make sure you subscribe to the feed and also make sure you, to make it easier for other people to find us, make sure you write a review and put some stars up there and we would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Now, our next episode is going to be another special episode. Uh, Sayako is going to be back and she's going to be talking with me about an episode called Bye bye, Psyduck. In this episode, Ash and company are kind of relaxing on an island where when Psyduck goes and disappears and is found by another Pokemon trainer. Now, she's a water trainer just like Misty, and the two of them decide to have a battle. While this is happening, Misty finds out that her Psyduck may have evolved into a gold duck. And all kinds of fun and hilarity ensue. So we leave you with a clip from our next episode. Bye bye, Psyduck. Best wishes, everyone. Wow, Golduck sounds like a really cool Pokemon, huh, Misty? Golduck is one of my very favorite Pokemon. Pokemon. Huh? You sound like you really know a lot about water Pokemon, Marino. Well, that's because I'm a trainer and I specialize in training water Pokemon. Really? Me too! Me too! No way! Why didn't you say so? I just love the way water Pokemon can float and swim and dive and surf and squirt! I know! I know! Don't you love the cute way they waddle around? I guess I they exactly. like talking about water Pokemon. About Pokemon. From my observations, I'd say that's true. Haven't changed in millions of years. Yeah, aren't they great? Here, look at these! I never buy my Pokemon lures. I always make them myself. I make all my lures too! And this is my most beautiful one! Maybe someday I'll capture one of the legendary Pokemon. I 
I'd love the chance to catch one of the dragon types that lives in the ocean. You think we can do it? I sure hope so. But there's one thing I don't understand. What? How come your Psyduck doesn't know how to swim? Uh, uh, well, yes. Uh, I, thought I was wondering about that myself. Let's watch and see how she gets herself out of this one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it sure is a rare Psyduck, but if you really want it, you might be able to talk me into trading it for your tentacruel. Hmm. <laughs> what do you say? I don't think so. But Misty, why don't we have a Pokemon battle to see which one of us is the better trainer? Okay, Marina! Thank you for joining us for this Arcade Archives Network video. If you like this, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave comments below. If you would like more, please go to thearcadearchives.com or zowiekerpowie.com. Thank you so much once again for joining us for this Arcade Archives Network video, and don't forget to keep playing like it's 1981. Message from Headquarters. This is a Rebellion production and is part of the Arcade Archives Network. That is all.